Thanks for staying with us. Now, we shape our buildings. Thereafter, they shape us. Now, that's the great word from Winston Churchill. This um, great orator was correct. The buildings and the workspaces where we spend our days can transform our personal and professional life, often dramatically. The best spaces have the power to open our minds, connect us with others, and encourage active collaboration as they supply us with the digital tools to excel. Now, those, fall, those that fall short can have opposite effects. Now, corporate real estate isn't just about nicer furniture. Um, it is more about creating you know, an environment where there is collaboration and it drives engagement. So today we're asking, what would workspace look like in the future? And what should we be doing you know, to make this a reality for businesses, right? Especially with the current realities of COVID-19. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wish Your Africa One with the hashtag Wish Show or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So I'll bring in our guest in like a minute or two. But I wanted to ask you, Jennifer. Yeah. What's your reality for workspace for you? Because you have been working from home. Yes, I have. But I've actually worked in the um, co-working space before, mm -hmm. before, I, um, before I got into my present company. And it was actually pretty cool because you're meeting with people from different industries and everyone is just coming together and then working. I'm working on my own thing. You're working on your own thing. And probably during lunch break, we all discuss after lunch, you go back to your work. And then that was how it was like until we had to move to get another space. But now that there is COVID, I think um, people can actually do that, especially uh, with people who have... Um, maybe bad internet in their houses or um, bad power. Hmm. So when but you don't I'm wondering have... how they will still do, how, what the experience will look like now that you know, we have a pandemic in our hand. You know, what should the workspaces look like? Would it be the same thing or maybe, maybe people work in, in isolated bubbles or no, something? No, you actually have to work in isolated bubbles. Hmm. They will have to create um, some, it depends on how big the, the space, space is. is. So they can create like little cubicles hmm. for each person to actually work. So you will actually be safe while you're there. Hmm. But I think that's how it's going to be. It might not be exactly different from what Absolutely. it used to be. How about you, Tammy? What do you think? Hello, Tammy, are you there? Have you had experiences with workspaces before? Well, yes, I am. Yes, yes, I have. So um, in September this year, sorry, last year, <laughs> in September last year, I was, um, I was briefed to anchor the Social Good Summit. And the Social Good Summit was for Lagos chapter. And the person who briefed me was talking to me from the US and other people who were planning it were from different parts. And this is a, an event for Lagos Social Good Summit. And I was in Abuja. And all I needed to do was to, I didn't have to come back to Lagos before time. What I needed to do was to find out about a good working space in Abuja. And I walked from there and it was really easy. It was seamless. So also I'm going to be having my uh, training soon on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I likely won't be back at home by that time. All I need to do is find another working space right where I am in Ibado, and it works. So it's convenient, it's, um, it's, it's a good idea. But like you, I'm just concerned about each co-working space keeping to um, safety protocols to ensure that it's not eventually the same thing we're trying to avoid when we gather in an office. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. But I don't know Ibado. You know, when I, hear, when I hear Lagos and Abuja, I can understand they might have co-working spaces. Do you think there will be one in Ibado for you to of find? Course. Yes, I have. Uwa, what do you think of Ubado that is a bush <laughs> somewhere in the desert? I don't like this. No, Uwa. I'm just no, I'm well. just wondering like how economically uh, profitable is it for someone to set up a business in Ibado? Okay, well, let me bring it, it out again. It is, so don't don't go there. I've <laughs> been there. I've worked there. It is. Thank you, Jennifer. Uwa, you need to come visit. I mean, I, I, I actually think it would be cheaper for you as an I've individual. Got a lot of offers. Sorry, Tim, you said come again. I, said, I just put it out online asking about places and people who have worked in different places have recommended different places. I mean, someone just mentioned to me BNI. I don't want to do marketing, okay. but a lot of people have mentioned good places that are quite really good. Mm, okay, all right. So, it's a good place. Let me bring it up, I guess. Farid is a venture capitalist, a serial entrepreneur, and a global experience, um, sorry, with global experience across a diverse set of industries, including advertising, 
Energy and Real Estate. He is the managing partner of Pacific Vanguard Limited, director of Midland Resources Limited, worked as business development executive at Ikot Tabasi Power, and he is the founder and the CEO of Workstation International Co-Work Limited, that's in bracket Workstation. So Farid is also a member of the advisory group on technology and creativity for the federal government of Nigeria. And he's joined us live in studio. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Farid. Thank you. Thank so you, guys. So you'll be hearing our drama on the uh, workspaces. Yeah, I've, I've heard what you guys are saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know what? Um, why we decided to talk about this, you know, is because... I mean, 2020 is like a defining year for a lot of things for us, you know. As well, we've moved past 2020. We're in 2021 I know, now. we're in 2021, <laughs> but it defined, 2020 defined a lot of things, right? And for me, what really stood out for me in 2020 was the fact that big companies that had like massive spaces and all of that, everybody had to completely shut down. And some of them, it's not like it's their property. They're running on rents and all of that. So it got me thinking, right? Maybe you were in the future when you decided that you wanted to create workstation because imagine if i had just paid for like a month right i'd renewed my my space for a month and all of that and this um COVID thing happened the body will not be on me as far as I have, i'm paying maybe like a monthly subscription yeah, you're, or you're, something you're, or even if i had paid an annual subscription i'm sure you'd have suspended it or something so you know I don't know. So, what, why did you even decide to start up the workspace, you know, in the first place? You know, what, were, so, what was on your so mind? So I think part of why we started Workstation was just looking for solutions for young entrepreneurs, startups, and businesses that are looking for like a flexible option to access office space. And also when you think about all the infrastructure challenges that we're facing in this part of the world with uh, high rents, uh, access to reliable power supply, and then obviously the high cost. So it's not even as, as though people can't get access to internet, but the type of internet speeds that you probably would need to get your work done efficiently, uh, you may not be able to necessarily afford to pay for that working from you know, home or in a silo or something like that. Yeah. So you know, we're able to kind of leverage on our enterprise uh, solutions and access to a lot of these larger internet service providers and get larger bandwidths to be able to distribute across all the different uh, companies and startups that come and use our space. So those are the things that we were thinking about and we just thought, you know what, um, you know, I mean, and again, I had uh, other businesses that I was part of and I just felt like this was a very important uh, business segment that someone needed to really harness and, you know, bring to the foray. And by the way, I mean, co-working wasn't generally new when we started it, but it was relatively becoming more uh, prevalent and acceptable yeah. here in Nigeria. I mean, obviously, in the in the in the early days, you know, you know, we had a lot of uh, interesting situations where people didn't really understand what the model was because you, you know, and and we have also had to try to adjust as the years have gone by as well to accommodate for the different nuances in the environment and the industries that, you know, look for space within our facilities. Yeah. So yeah. So that was one of the key reasons why we we started. We were thinking power, internet and just the general infrastructure of people just needing a space um, to, to work from as opposed to working from maybe, I mean, cafes, yes, people work from cafes, but I feel like there was that need for a more dedicated mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. because a cafe would not necessarily give you the type of bandwidth or mm -hmm. internet speed that you need to get your work done. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. And they close at a certain time. They close, I said, they, they can, you might not even have where to plug in your laptop to work exactly. and all of that. Some, some spaces try yeah. to limit, limit yeah. the amount of time people spend within mm -hmm. the, their facilities so mm -hmm. that they can turn, because their, their core business is not for you to sit there and mm -hmm. use their data. It's to eat and go. It's to eat, spend money, <laughs> and, 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 and keep it moving. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, even would, would you say that it has been profitable over the years? So I th believe co-working is very important. Um, and, you know, profitability is really a function of your business model, right? So uh, we've been lucky enough that uh, we've been able to get a lot of larger companies, larger corporations to support us. And when I say support, I mean coming in and taking up space, long-term office space with us. And in turn, what they are actually doing is supporting that growing early stage company that's looking for space um, to come into an environment like that and get access to the type of resources that a multinational or a larger indigenous uh, company has access, access to. to yeah. So, yeah, so by virtue of that, 
we've been able to actually sustain the, the model and the business through those larger companies that come in and take up space within these type of uh, shared facilities. And then by that, they trickle down to the startups and the co-working um, uh, companies that come in and take the hot desking and the flex spaces because they obviously get access to the fast speeds because those companies require those type of speeds, those mm -hmm. type of uh, infrastructure already. Yeah. So yeah, so once your model is right, it, 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 it actually yeah. can be sustainable. Wow. Have there ever yeah. been a time when you were probably overbooked and then people came in and you had to turn them back? Oh yeah, I mean, the, in, you know, especially pre-pandemic days. Oh, yes, wow. we. I'm come to yeah. that. <laughs> how did pre, the, how did COVID affect the business? Yeah, so I mean, pre-pandemic days, we we did have a, a constant demand for for space. Uh, you know, obviously, the the pandemic really really took a toll, not just on our business, but just on any business across the world. I mean, especially, um, you know, if your business is economic day-to-day -day activity driven, right? So mm -hmm. when everything shuts down, then nobody is moving around, nobody is doing anything. So ultimately, business ultimately slows down and companies can afford to continue to pay those overhead costs, mm -hmm. those yeah. money, monthly running costs mm -hmm. become hard to, to cope with, especially when there's no income. So, you know, we know that when the pandemic hit and the lockdown started, we probably saw about a 75% drop in our mm. co-working business mm. and we saw that even a lot of companies uh indigenous companies m most particularly uh that had office space with us private office space with us um had to kind of figure out a way to reshuffle restructure because at that point in time you know with zero economic activity you know money is not coming in it's hard to pay your staff salaries you know it's hard to think about even renewing your lease yeah. because you're thinking to yourself okay What's the outlook for 2020, you know? And even as, as we're in 2021 now, we're still experiencing um, the same kind of- A bit of- yeah. A bit of the surge and the yeah. resurgence of, you know, the pandemic. But thankfully, I mean, now that there's a vaccine that, mm. you know, is, you know, obviously Hopefully. being administered and, mm -hmm. you know, given to people gradually, we'll begin to see some sort of recovery uh, over time. But it's not gonna be a quick recovery. Because obviously we need to sensitize people as well and then make sure that um, uh, people can trust even the spaces that they're going into. So one of the key things that we're actually focused on is making sure hygiene, making sure that the spaces are clean, social distancing, not allowing too many people to access the space at once. Mm -hmm. And uh, even now with our co-working business, we also try to ensure that we're focused on teams. So ideally we would allow a lot of people to come in on a day-to-day -day basis the flex access but because of the pandemic we've kind of tried to limit that to strategically just only allowing teams so maybe a small startup that needs access to space we provide them with space so that, that way we kind of have an idea and we can easily trace if there's any there are issues, issues yeah and, and stuff Absolutely. like that yes <laughs> let me come to you Tammy, are you there or did we lose her? All right, thank you very much, Parvi. Yes, I can Hi, hear you. Hi, Tammy, how are you? Can you hear me? We can, go ahead. I'm good. So I was going to ask you about, I was going to ask you about, um, so I was going through your website and I found that this is interesting because this is one of the services that I found that some other organizations provide and that's the one you call the nomad, um, nomad offering. And what that involves, it seems to me as though there is no offering for a physical workspace for that one. It seems as though what you have is a, to be a part of access, to be a part of your community, and also to have a virtual assistant. So virtual assistant just to me shows the importance of remote working. I'd just like you to talk to us about the importance of remote working and what brought about having such plans. Every other thing seems to be, oh, come to our office, we have a private space. We have a place that is limited. We have all of these offers. But this one doesn't seem to have any physical location. It seems to be, oh, just be a part of our community online. So what advantage is that working remotely totally? No working space in this um, context. Actually, you know, the, the Nomad plan, I'm, I'm not sure if the, it's detailed uh, properly if, where you're looking at it. 
But there are actually three different tiers to our nomad plan. Mm. And what that allows you to do is, yes, there the, there's the basic plan just for people that need access to our digital member network of over 5,000 uh, members and businesses on, on, on the digital side. And, uh, you know, if you need access to a business address. Uh, but you see, all our plans actually allow you to access the space. It's just on demand if you're a nomad plan. So you have that option. Uh, because I know she mentioned that it doesn't include it, but it, it, it gives you access to uh, a business address, but it doesn't immediately give you access to office space unless you, you really need it. it. But now, you know, I mentioned that there are three tiers of our Nomad plan. Mm. So there's a Nomad Plus, which I'm going to just quickly touch on so I don't take up too much time. That plan actually includes access to the space once a month. So if you subscribe to that particular plan, you do get all the perks of having a business address and, you know, receiving your mail, getting notifications and having access to office space whenever you want within, you know, that period of your mm. subscription. Okay. All right. So we're going to go on a very short break. I really like what, um, what you're talking about this plan, because now I'm thinking we're talking to young people, right? For someone that wants to start up a business, right? How easy is it for me to say, I want to start up everything? People like you should be able to help ease up certain kinds of burdens that would have even come up in the first place, you know, in terms of overheads and all of that. I think that's what you're trying to also... Exactly. The, the need you're trying to meet. So exactly. we'll talk about that when we come back from the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.